we'll get going. All right, I'm gonna mute myself, Lisa, so it's all you, okay? Okay, let me just get a timer going so that, you know, we're not doing Pilates for eight hours. Of course, you have nothing better to do, do you? We were all stuck inside. Um, anyhow, let me just get this going. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna lie down all the way on the mat. So we lie down all the way on the mat. Our hands are on the mat, just nice and relaxed. You can have your feet and your knees bent towards the ceiling. And just take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale it, you let your body sink into the mat. Take a nice deep breath in. And exhale all the way. Just kind of relax, letting your body sink all the way into the mat. Extend your legs all the way out and take another deep breath in and extend all the way out. One more deep breath in. Extend or breathe all the way out. Bend your knees. I've got my feet about hip width apart. And we're just gonna show you a couple ways of doing a nice neck lift. A lot of times people say, I've tried Pilates mat and it hurt my neck, so let's show you how to do it correctly. One of the things that we wanna be doing is we're just going to lift our head about an inch or two off the mat and then lower it back down. Lift it up straight up and then lower it back down. Now, if that hurts your neck, don't do it, that's okay. So lift straight up and lower it back down. Now what we're gonna do when we lift straight up, you're gonna think about drawing a line on the ceiling with your nose as you curve down towards your, your um, knees. So I'm gonna show you that, I'm gonna lift up and then I'm just gently gonna lift up right above to the um, end of my shoulder blades and then I'm gonna lower back down. So do this one with me. We lift our neck up. We draw like a line with our nose on the ceiling. We come right up to the shoulder blades. We draw that line back down the ceiling and then we lower the head. And we're gonna do two more. We're gonna lift, draw that line and lower back down. Now you're lifting also from your belly. So sometimes it's squeezing that belly into the back, bringing your belly button in. I call it sucking in the gut. So lift, draw that line, lower it back down. Now we're gonna do some knee lifts. So I want you to bring your right knee, we call this to tabletop, and then just touch the ground with the toe and bring it back up. The movement should be coming from the abdominal muscle right in here. So sometimes my abdominal muscle doesn't like to work um, and so I have to actually touch it to activate it. So we're gonna bring that leg there, touch it down, two more. I'm also standing very tall and long into my left foot. That's anchoring my body down. And lower it back down. Other leg, left leg comes up to tabletop. And we're gonna lower it back down and lift it back up. Lower it, touch the toe to the mat and lift. Again, I'm nice and I've got my, a lot of anchor into my right foot that's giving me stability because I don't wanna have my hips wobbly. I'm bringing the muscle, this muscle is bringing my leg back up. So I'm bringing it down and I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it down and tapping with my toe and I'm bringing it up. Bring it down, bring it up, one more. Touch the toe, bring it up, lower the foot to the mat. Just bring your knees into your chest and let's just hug our, our knees into the chest. Take a deep breath in, blow it out. And now we're gonna build onto this. So, my feet are down. I'm going to now do that neck roll that we did. So I'm gonna lift my head up and we're gonna get ready for the 100. And I'm gonna curl. I'm gonna bring my hands off the mat. Building from there, I'm gonna bring my feet into the tabletop, both legs. 
And now I'm gonna pump my arms and I'm gonna breathe in for the count of five, three, four, five, and exhale to the count of five, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Big thing is I've got my belly scooped in nice and tight. That's what's holding my legs up. If you get, you know, if, if it starts to get a little wobbly, it's okay to lower it and just keep doing that. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. If you want a challenge, go ahead and extend those legs all the way out. Four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Last one. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Lower the feet, lower the head. Woo! All right. So now we're gonna extend the feet all the way out. Actually, I lied. We're gonna bring this, we're gonna, it's called the roll up and we're gonna do it in a um, couple different steps. So the roll up, first thing we're gonna do is bring our hands to the ceiling. Now just reach your uh, tips of your fingers all the way up to the ceiling and then drop your shoulders back into the mat. And we're gonna reach up to the ceiling and drop them back into the mat. So you feel how you're kind of plugged in with those arms and those shoulder blades into the lat muscles. Um, so now what we want to do is I want you to bring your arms around, bring them to the back of your thighs. We're going to roll up and we're going to walk up our thighs. So we're first going to lift the head, we're going to curl, and then we're going to walk up. And if you need to, bring your legs out. And then we're going to slowly, I'm walking my hands, down my thighs, and I'm coming back down. And when I get my shoulder blades, then I'm gonna start to bring my neck and my head back to the original position. And again, head comes up. We do the curl, curling, curling, curling. And we're really using that abdominal muscle to bring us up. And now I'm gonna lower back down. I'm still keeping my head nice and curled and all the way down. Now to build onto this, if you want, extend the legs all the way out. The arms go up to the ceiling. Now we're gonna curl, we're gonna lift the head, and we're gonna curl, and we're gonna scoop our belly, and that's what's gonna bring us all the way up. And I'm sliding my hands like I'm sliding it on the top of a table. And then I'm gonna slowly roll back down one slow vertebrae at a time. And I'm bringing my hands up to the ceiling. You can bring your hands back a little bit. It comes up to the ceiling, we lift up. Slide our hands along the tabletop. Shoulders are nice and relaxed down our back as we roll down. You've got three more to do. We curl up. I'm really scooping with my belly. I've got my legs and feet together. It's okay if you have them a little apart, that's okay. Inhale comes up. Exhale, lower back down. Inhale comes up. Exhale, lower back down. We'll add a little challenge onto this. I'm gonna bend my knees. I'm gonna do the roll up. So we're gonna roll up. This time as we go down, I only want you to go down just a little bit and hold it to the count of five, four, three, two, one. Then come back up. Then go down a little bit lower if you can. Hold it. Five, four, three, two, one. Sit and on up. We're gonna lower down just a little further. Hold it, five, four, three, two, one. Come on up. We've got one more to go down. We're gonna bring it down, down, down. Hold it to right there. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on up. And now lower all the way down. Legs go long. Hands are in the mat. I want you to bring that right knee in and just give it a nice little tug in. I'm gonna be long in my left leg and I'm pressing my left heel down as I extend my right leg 
to the ceiling. It's okay if you have a bent leg, not a big deal. We're gonna do one leg circles. So one leg circles, I'm gonna kick my foot a little up towards my left shoulder. I'm gonna bring my leg around and I'm gonna stop in the center. The goal is to keep our hips nice and level. So if you need to, go ahead and put your hands on the hip. And it's not the size of the circle as much as it is the stability of the hip. So if you can only do a little circle, that's okay. Again, we're really focusing on the lower abdominal muscles, but also we don't wanna be rocking with our hip. And you got two more over, down and around and up, and now we reverse the circle. So we go the other way. So I bring my leg up to my right shoulder and I bring it down and around. To get my stability, I can use my hands down hard onto the mat. I'm really pressing hard into my left heel to also anchor my hip for stability. And we got two more. Don't forget to breathe. And now bring that knee back into the chest. Give it a nice hug. Extend it all the way up. Flex your foot and lower it all the way down. Left leg comes in. We give it a nice hug. You might find that you have one side tighter than the other. I do. We all do. Left leg extends up to the ceiling. Again, I have my hands anchored into the mat. I've really got my right heel anchored into the mat. And now we're gonna circle. So I'm gonna go up towards my shoulder. I'm gonna bring it down and around and I'm gonna stop in the center. Up, down and around and stop. Up, down and around and stop. Again, if you're feeling wobbly in the hips, that's okay. Just make that circle that much smaller. It's okay. This is all about hip stability. A lot of times as runners, sometimes we don't have a good hip stability. One more, and now stop and reverse. Again, it's okay to bend your knee. Doesn't matter. This is all about getting the lower abdominals to work. Sometimes they don't like to. And two more. Down and around and stop. Hug the leg into your chest. Lift it up to the sky or your ceiling, flex the foot, and like you're drawing a line down the wall with your heel. We really are trying to come out of that hip. Bend your knees. We're gonna roll up like we did with our roll up and come to a sitting position. This is called rolling like a ball. We're gonna do this in a couple different, um, different setups. So I'm gonna, Bring my knees into my chest. I've got a nice, kind of like a little C curve going in. So in essence, I'm kind of looking at my toes, but I don't have my chest, my, my chin to my chest. I want to have like, like I'm holding something underneath you and you have to kind of come up and go over like a bar that I'm holding. So now what I want you to do is just bring your toes off the mat and hold it. Lower the feet back down. Scooping with your lower abdominal muscles, we're gonna lift the toes off the ground. And we're gonna lower back down. Now we're gonna add the rolling in. So I'm gonna lift, I'm gonna roll back to my shoulder blades and I'm gonna come back up. And we lift and come back up. We're gonna do this three times. A nice way to help with that is think about pressing your legs against your arms. That can help with giving you some stability. And last one. And then hold it with your toes off the ground if you can. And now lower the feet. Open up your hands and lie back down. Bring your left leg all the way down. I'm gonna bring my right hand to my right side of my ankle. My left hand is right underneath my kneecap. I've got my knee bent. I'm gonna lift my head and I'm gonna come up into that, right up off my shoulder blades. I'm gonna extend my left leg out and we're gonna pull in twice on the right knee and then we're gonna switch and I'm gonna switch sides and switch and switch and switch 
and switch. If this gets to be too much for your neck, it's okay to just lower back down. You can do it that way, whatever works. And we've got two more each side. And now just bring your knees, hold your knees into your chest, lower back down. Just look to the left and look to the right. Loosening up our necks a little bit, look to the left again. And look to the right, making sure our shoulder blades are down our back. We're gonna curl back up. And this time I'm gonna extend both my arms and legs to the ceiling. I'm gonna bring my arms around and bring my knees back into the chest. I'm gonna open, bring my hands up and my feet up to the ceiling. I'm gonna circle my arms around and bring them back in. Lift up, circle around, bring it back in. Lift up, circle around, bring it back in. Lift up, circle around, bring it back in. If you need to lower down, that's okay. Otherwise, we're gonna to continue to build from this. We're gonna do scissors. So my right leg is gonna go up. I'm gonna grab right underneath my calf muscle. My left leg is extended nice and tall. And I'm gonna pull twice on my right leg. And if I have to bend it, that's okay. And then I'm gonna switch. So pull, pull, switch. Pull, pull, switch. Again, we're really scooping with our belly. Scooping, that means that I'm bringing that belly button to my back. Don't forget to breathe. And pull, pull, switch. Pull, pull, switch, last one. Bring the knees into the chest, lower the head back down. Look left, look right. Coming back up, I'm gonna lift my head, I'm gonna draw my line with my nose to the ceiling. And this time, I'm gonna bring my hands behind my head and I'm gonna extend my legs to the ceiling. If that's too hard, go ahead and just lower back down. Not a big deal. And we're gonna lower the legs to the count of three, not very far, one, two, three, and then I'm gonna scoop my lower abdominal muscle to bring it back up. So I'm gonna lower one, two, three, and I'm gonna scoop it back up. One, two, three, scoop it back up, making sure that your elbows are wide. We don't wanna be doing like a sit-up crunch. We want it nice and wide. And lower, two, three, lift. Lower, two, three, lift. Last one. Lower, two, three, lift. Bend the knees, lower the head. Bring your knees, give it a nice hug. Adding on to this, we're gonna do side to side. Side to side is the hands go back behind the, the head. So I really have them, my, if I'm holding up my neck, I'm gonna extend my left leg and I'm gonna lift my shoulder blade up to the uh, opposite knee. And then I'm gonna switch. And again, we really wanna keep the elbows wide because this you should be pulling in from your obliques. And switch. Don't forget to breathe. I'm reaching nice and long with that leg that's going straight. And you got two more. One more. And bring the knees into the chest, lower the head. Give your knees a nice, nice pull into your body. Loosening up that lower back. Look to the left. Look to the right. Feet go on the ground. You can either walk yourself up like we did in the roll up, or if you want, add that challenge. We're gonna sit up. And we're gonna spread our feet just to the width of the mat. If you don't have a mat, or you're using a towel, or you're just on your carpet, it's about hip width apart. And this is called spine stretch forward. I've got my feet flexed back. I'm sitting up nice and tall in my lower back. My arms are reaching nice forward. I'm gonna reach nice and tall in my abdomen, so I'm gonna sit up nice and tall. I'm gonna draw a line with my nose so that my neck isn't right into my chest, but it's just bending down. And now I'm gonna take a deep breath in, and I'm gonna exhale and go forward. 
three, four, five. When I come back to sitting, it's like stacking one vertebrae at a time to where you're back in the original position. Take a deep breath in and exhale and go forward. Two, three, four, five. Coming back, stacking one vertebrae at a time. Inhale and exhale as you go forward and you're looking down the mat at your mat as you're going forward. You're still looking down at the mat as you're coming forward or stacking back up and then the head comes up. Nice deep breath in. I'm gonna look at my mat. I'm gonna slide my hands down along the table and exhale. And now I'm gonna sit and stack my vertebrae one vertebrae at a time. Head comes up. Deep breath in. Looking at the mat, I'm gonna bring my hands down along the table. Exhale, exhale, exhale. And I'm gonna scoop with my belly and I'm gonna stack my vertebrae up one at a time till I'm back up nice and tall. Next one we're gonna do is just called open rocker prep. With our legs still to the side, I want you to reach down, whether you can grab to your shins, ankles, wherever. I just want you to bring one foot in, then the other. So I've got my, my hands are on the top of my shins. I'm gonna just lift my toes up. And if you can, extend your right leg out, keep holding it, and then bring it back in. Extend the left leg out, hold it, bring it back in. Whoo, my hammies are tight. And it's okay if you don't go to a straight leg. It's okay if you go to here. What we're really doing is we're focusing on our abdominal muscles, keeping us nice and balanced onto the mat. And last one each side. And now lower the feet, extend your legs all the way out, and we're gonna do what's called corkscrew. I'm gonna bend my knees, I'm gonna bring them to tabletop, I'm gonna lift them to the ceiling. Again, it's okay if you bend. The head stays down on the mat. I'm pressing deep into the mat with my hands, and I'm gonna bring my legs around to the right and then stop at center and then I'm gonna bring them down and around and stop again. So I'm gonna to go to the right, stop at center, I'm gonna switch directions, go the opposite direction, stop at center. When I'm doing my circle, I'm really focusing that the movement isn't coming from my quads, it's coming from my abdominal muscles. So I've got my abdominal muscles really engaged. And that's okay, if, it, if it's coming from your legs at first, that's okay. But we also really wanna make sure that the hips are stable so they're not really super big circles. And we're gonna do two more each way. And I'm pressing down hard into the mat. And now you're gonna bend your knees, hug them into the chest, and we're gonna sit up for saw. So you can put your feet onto the mat, extend them all the way out if you want and then just sit up. The feet go uh, hip width apart. I'm sitting up nice and tall out of my lower back. I've got my arms out to the side. Now we really want to make sure that our uh, shoulders are nice and relaxed. First thing we're going to do, and if you have shoulder problems and this hurts, that's okay. You can just cross your arms this way. Not a big deal. We're going to Twist over to the right. And the twist is initiating from the abdominal area and the shoulders go along for the ride. And then we're gonna come back to center. And now we're gonna twist to the left and come back to center. Twist to the right, come back to center. Twist to the left, come back to center. Now we're gonna add on. I'm gonna twist to the right, I'm gonna take my hand that's forward, like I'm gonna do a karate chop, and I'm gently going to lean over towards my foot as my other arm is extended towards the back. 
So I'm reaching in opposition. Then I'm gonna sit up, I'm gonna bring my arms back to a T, and then I'm gonna untwist. So I'm gonna twist over to the left. I'm bringing my hand, like I'm gonna do a karate chop, and I'm just gently gonna lean forward. As I'm leaning forward, you wanna think about bringing this opposite hip back so it's not coming forward. And I'm gonna sit up. I'm gonna bring my hands back to a T and untwist. And other side. And we lean forward. Sitting up nice and tall. Arms come back to a T and untwist. And we twist over to the left. We reach for that foot. And we sit up. Come to the T. And again, twist to the right. Reach for that foot. Sit up. Come to a T and untwist. Left side. Reaching forward. Sitting up, come to the T and twist. One more each side. And reach, sit up, untwist. Other side, reach, sit up, untwist. Turning back onto our mat, I'm gonna lie back all the way down. And we're gonna do some shoulder bridges. When we do shoulder bridges, I've got my feet really anchored into the mat. I've got my hands anchored into the mat, and it's all one movement. So I'm gonna lift my hips, and when I roll down, I'm gonna roll down one vertebrae at a time. So what I mean is I'm gonna start with the top, and then I'm gonna slowly, I'll lift my hands so you guys can see, and I'm gonna curl down one vertebrae at a time until my seat is all the way down and my hips are down. So we bridge up all in one and curl down one vertebrae at a time. So sometimes, keep doing the exercise, I'll just explain something. Sometimes in Pilates, we call these little buttons. So we have a button right, right at our um, breastbone, one right in between our breastbone and the belly button. Button three is our belly button. Button four is right between our belly button and our pubic bone, and button five is the pubic bone. So now, when we bridge up, we curl down, button one. Then you go to button two, button three, button four, button five, all the way down. And bridge up. This time, adding on if you want, you can keep doing the bridge and then lowering back down if you wanna add on. I'm gonna anchor hard into my left leg and I'm gonna lift my right foot into tabletop and I'm gonna lower it down. I'm gonna anchor into my right foot and I'm gonna lift my left leg and I'm gonna lower it back down. And now I'm gonna lower down one vertebrae at a time. And we'll do that again. Hips come up, anchor hard into that left hip or that left foot, bring that right leg up. Lower it back down, bring the left leg up. Lower it back down and curl down one vertebrae at a time. So you really have to focus on bringing all those muscles in. Adding on to this, we can come up. I'm gonna bring my right leg up. I'm gonna extend it up to the ceiling. I'm gonna bring it all the way down to the floor and then I'm gonna drag my heel back to the original position. Bringing the left leg up, extend it to the ceiling, flex that foot, draw your heel down the opposite wall, and then draw the heel back into original position, and then curl down one vertebrae at a time. We'll do one more of those. So I'm gonna bridge up, anchor into my left foot, Right leg comes to the tabletop. I bring it all the way up. I'm gonna flex my foot. I'm really gonna reach long out of my hip, all the way down, dragging the heel back into original position. Left leg comes up, up to the ceiling, 
Flexing that foot, reaching nice and long, keeping those hips up if you can, draw that heel back in, and now lower down one vertebrae at a time. Good. We're gonna do the side series now. Side series is we're gonna come onto the side, and you can either bring your head all the way down onto your arm, especially if you have neck issues, or if you want, you can bring it up. I'm gonna bring my feet out just to about a 20 degree angle and I've got my hand um, right in front of me for stability. So if you've got, you know, you can put your hand here wherever you feel stable with. I'm going to flex my bottom foot and I'm gonna lift my top foot just to my hip height. And I'm just going to reach it forward and then I'm gonna reach it back. And you don't have to reach it back very far. The whole goal is to really come out of this hip and stretch the hip out. So sometimes for me, I feel like I get my hips and my ribs. And so, because that's what moms do, we do this with our kids. So we really wanna reach it nice and long. So we come forward and reaching nice and long, we bring it back. We come forward and reaching nice and long, we bring it back. Forward, back, one more. And now we're gonna lower the leg on top of the bottom leg. I'm gonna rotate my leg, my femur, my whole thigh is gonna rotate towards the, uh, the ceiling if you can. Then we're gonna kick the leg up. I'm gonna flex my foot and I'm gonna lower back down. And I think about like you're drawing a line against the wall with your heel. So I'm gonna point and bring it up, flex, bring it down. Point, bring it up, flex, and bring it down. Two more, point, flex, lower back down. My shoulder is nice and relaxed. It's not up by my ear. And lower back down. And we're gonna just lift the top leg a little bit off from the bottom leg and we're gonna do little circles forward. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold it and reverse the circle. So now little circles backwards. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lower the leg. Lift the leg up, then bend it and Bring the foot in front of your hip. I've got my hand wrapped around my ankle. And now I'm gonna bring my lower leg back to where I'm even all the way down. And then I'm gonna lift my lower leg and I'm gonna lower it. I'm gonna lift and lower, lift and lower, lift and hold. Now circles forward. So I'm gonna circle that leg forward. Three four, five, hold it and reverse that circle. Two, three, four, five, lower the leg, release the top leg, lift it up, lower it onto the lower leg. And now we're gonna just lie on our belly. I'm gonna put my hand on my, together, stacked up. I'm gonna lower my forehead to my hand and I'm just gonna gently lift my toes off the ground and I'm gonna beat my heels together. So we're gonna beat two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Lower the heels back down and then roll onto your other side. So I'll roll this way. And again, we wanna just, you can be uh, lying on your arm all the way down, or if you want, you can bring your head up. My legs are gonna come out roughly about 20 degrees. I've got stability holding my hand in front of me. My shoulder is nice and relaxed, and I'm gonna lift the top leg to hip height, and I'm just gonna bring it forward, and I'm gonna bring it back. I'm really using my abdominal muscle to bring it forward and back. So sometimes, again, you might have to put your hand up here just to make sure that that muscle is working. This is totally my lazy side. It does not like to work. So sometimes I really have to uh, make sure that I'm getting it to uh, fire up. 
and forward and back. Last one, forward and back, and then lower the leg on top of the bottom leg. We're gonna rotate that top leg so that our uh, quad and our thigh is looking towards the ceiling. And I'm gonna lift that leg and point. I'm gonna flex the foot, and then I'm gonna lower it all the way down. And I'm gonna lift, flex, lower. Point and lift. Flex, lower, looking great, everyone. Point and flex, and lower. Point, come up, flex, lower. One more, flex, and lower back down. Just bringing my foot a little bit up from my other foot, and now I'm just gonna do little circles forward. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, hold, reverse that circle. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Lower the foot. Now bring the foot up, and then I'm gonna bend the knee, and I'm gonna bring my foot in front of my hip, and I'm gonna bring my other leg to where it's nice and aligned with the rest of my body. And now I've got my foot flexed, my extended leg, and I'm gonna lift and lower, Lift and lower, lift and lower, and lower. Last one, lift, lower, lift, hold. And now we do circles forward. Circle one, circle two, circle three, <clears throat> circle four, circle five, and now reverse it. One, two, three, four, and five, lower the leg, bringing the other leg on top of it. We're gonna try a couple more exercises and then we'll be done. So I'm gonna come on my back. This is called teaser. So one thing about teaser is it's challenging, but we're gonna give it a whirl. I'm gonna bend my knees, I'm gonna extend my right leg out. And to start, you can walk up like what we did with the uh, um, rolling up. And then you can walk your leg, your hands back down your leg. If you want to challenge with that, arms go up and we're going to curl and lift up. And then we're going to lower back down one vertebrae at a time. Arms go to the top the ceiling. You can bring your arms back a little bit. They come to the ceiling and we really scoop our belly and that brings us up. Holding it there, I want you to switch legs. Left leg is up, and we're gonna lower back down. Hands go back. We draw like a line with our hands in the ceiling as we come back up. We lower back down. Hands go back, coming back up. Stay up like this, and if you want to add another challenge, bring both legs out. Keep holding it. Lower the legs, scoop your belly and lift. Lower the legs, scoop your belly and lift. Lower the legs, scoop it up. This time we're going to roll down legs, body, all at the same time. And we're going to sit up. We're going to do a mermaid stretch, and this is what we're going to, I love this stretch, especially when I run. <clears throat> so, get you in a position. I'm going to take my left leg, and I'm going to bend it <clears throat> and bring it, my right leg back this way. So really, my left leg is perpendicular to, you know, my thigh. Want to make sure that our hips are straight. One of the things that I notice, and I do this, this stretch always when I'm done running, is uh, a lot of times our backs are really, really tight and it's because we have really tight hips and this is really common in women. So this is a great exercise, whether you're just sitting with your kid or watching TV. The more that you can sit like this, your hips open up, you really get out of that lower back. Right now I'm gonna bring my arms to a T. I'm gonna bring my right hand down to my right ankle. I'm gonna bring my left hand up by my ear, and I'm gently gonna lift out of my side and lean over 
to my right. And then I'm going to come back to straight. I'm going to gently lean over to my right. And I'm going to come back to center. I'm going to gently lean over to my right. We're going to add on to this. I'm going to come back to center. I'm going to bring my arms to a T. I'm going to almost tilt like a teapot. I'm going to tilt over to my left and I'm going to get a nice stretch. And then I'm going to come back to center, making a T. My right hand goes down to my ankle. My left hand goes up towards the sky. And I'm going to do a nice stretch. Coming back to center, opening to a T. And I'm going to tilt to the left side in a nice stretch. I'm really reaching long with my upper hand towards the wall, opposite wall. And I'm going to come back to center. And we're going to do one more. We lift up. We go over to the side, we come back to the T, and we reach to the other side. And we come back to a T, and now we switch sides. Opposite leg. My left leg is bent back, <clears throat> my right leg is perpendicular. You'll see that this is a really tight side. So the reason I do this, and you might know, you might feel it too, the more that you can sit down in this hip, the more that we open it up. And the way that I actually check is sometimes I can go, what's, where's my seat in relationship to the mat? So um, I know that if my hip is really tight, I might be like this. And the more that I can sit down and open it up, the better that's going to be for my back. In the meantime, I'm going to take my left hand, <clears throat> I'm going to put it on my ankle. The right hand goes up. And you'll see how tight the side is. I'm going to bend over to the right, or to the left, sorry. And then I'm going to come back to center. I'm going to lift up nice and tall, like I'm lifting my arm up to the ceiling. And I'm drawing a line on the ceiling with my arm, getting a nice stretch in here. And come back. One more, lifting up nice, stretch over. Come back to center, arms go to a T. We're building on, so now I'm going to reach over to the opposite side, getting a nice stretch. And I'm going to come back to a T. Arm goes to the ear, left leg goes to the ankle. I'm going to stretch over to the left. I'm going to come to center, come to the T, and reach over to the opposite side. I'm going to come to the center. Come to the T, last one, reaching to my left. Come to the T, reach over to the right, and come to center. The last exercise we're going to do is called seal. So it's like rolling like a ball. And we do that to massage our spine. So sometimes when, especially if I'm tight or I'm driving or I'm somewhere, this is an exercise that always loosens up my back. So I'm gonna show you this way. I'm gonna take my hands and I'm gonna thread them through my legs. I'm going to bring my hands around to my ankles. I'm going to sit back like I did in rolling like a ball and I'm gonna bring my toes together. And just so you can get the feel of that, we're just gonna bring the toes together and then you roll back to your shoulder blades and come back up. Roll back to your shoulder blades and come back up. If you want to add on, you can tap your toes three times, two, three, go back, one, two, three, and come up. One, two, three, go back, one, two, three, comes up. Last one, two, three, go back, one, two, three, scoop and come up, and lower the feet, lower your hands, and we are done. You guys did great. You looked awesome. Yay! A um, couple things that I want to talk to you about. When I was talking with um, Dimity and Sarah, you know, in some of these uh, training things, uh, training programs that they have, one was, uh, you know, how to learn how to run light with your feet. So I notice that if I feel like I'm just bumping along really, really, like my feet are heavy and low, 
when I engage my core, which means I literally have to think about bringing it all in, like what you did in these exercises, and I lift up nice and tall, I'm not lifting my shoulders, but I'm lifting my waist nice and tall, I actually run a lot lighter, and the running just becomes so much easier. So that's one of the reasons that we wanted to incorporate Pilates in here, because this is all about core strength, and that'll make you a stronger runner, and that'll also help prevent some injuries, because once we're into the core, that's what's absorbing some of the shock, that's what's gonna keep our backs from getting sore, and then, you know, we also increase our speed and it's a good overall different cardio. Absolutely. Thank you, Lisa. That was so great. Um, definitely felt parts of my body I have not felt in a long time, <laughs> which is a good thing. You know, it's a good thing to, to remember that you have so many different muscles and tendons and ligaments that can support you. Because sometimes we think like glutes, quads, right? And that's, and that's we are um, very quad, uh, most women runners are very quad heavy. So um, does anybody have any questions or anything? Um, Liz says it's pretty sure it's gonna hurt to laugh tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I think it's so easy to follow. Thank you for the cues. Everyone's super grateful. Thank you, Lisa. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing that I would say is, I mean, I feel like we did so much today, um, which is great. You really gave us a really nice overview of so many different Pilates. Um, exercises so is there anything like i mean i guess is there any are there any if people want to just do maybe a couple before they head out on their run to get their core engaged or to really think about what you just talked about to make sure that they can tap into that are there any that you do before a run yeah um i always do i actually do the toe taps because i really want to focus on getting my lower abdominals so that was um after we did the neck lift we mm -hmm. did the toe taps then I do the 100 because that's almost like a little pre-cardio. That is all about getting our cardiovascular going. So you're pumping, you're getting all these muscles to work. And then I also do the roll-up because I really want to get my spine articulated. And so I really want to loosen up that spine. So I'll show you what I mean. I, I'll do almost the first three exercises. So I'll do this one, I'll do the toe. Then because my hips tend to get tight, I like to do the one where I reach nice and long and drag that heel in. Mm -hmm. The other one I'll do to get my cardio going is just the 100. And then to really loosen up my back, I do the roll up because I really have to bring all my vertebrae into the equation. And it kind of like when my back gets tight, if I do the foam roller, you can hear my spine go pop, 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 pop. So this is a nice way for me to loosen up. If I'm super tight, I might add the leg series and then I'll go for my run. And again, I do it because I really want to get out of that hip. And that's a big one for us runners because as you said, you're always banging on the, the thighs and the hamstrings. But really, when we can get out of the hips, you're going to get a really nice you know, stride out of that. And it's just now everything's engaged. You've got your, your spine loosened up. We've got our muscles engaged. And now you're ready for the run. Nice. So here are a couple questions. Um, uh, Mindy's asking, do you have, do you, do you, have you ever put any stuff up on YouTube, any of your classes? Lynn, uh, uh, we are starting to. Okay. Um, you know, I, I normally train in my Pilates studio, but life is going virtual. Yes. And so uh, I've done a lot of training virtual. So um, if any of you have, you know, we will uh, I'll make announcements with another mother runner, like, hey, we've got a new video up there and I can sure. shrink down these. But also too, if you have reformers, um, you know, some people are really into it. I do training on that. So my daughter's been in our studio because I'm actually down in Florida. And so she's up in Indiana and uh, she's like, mom, can I do Pilates? And I was like, yeah, so anything. But yeah, we will be getting them out there. Awesome, and we're gonna share this one so you guys can follow this again at your leisure and we'll talk to Lisa about potentially doing some more classes. I feel like this was a big success. Um, uh, Linda's asking, in that mermaid pose, do, you, do both of your sit bones touch the ground? Is that, an, like, tell, talk about where? Uh, that's a great question. Ideally, that's what we want. Um, mine do not. Um, but that's why I'm sitting, even as I'm talking with you guys, that's why I'm sitting this way. The big thing is we want the hips straight. And that's why, you know, when my hips are super tight, I'll actually just sit. And sometimes I have to, like, I'm almost pressing my hip and my thigh away from my hip to loosen it up, and then I can sit back down. 
For example, when I first started this stretch, I was so tight in my hips that I actually had to have a box because my hip was like this. It was so tight. Sure. And then I kept working at it. But that's a great question. I do not have both my sits bones down flat on the mat. Yeah. Okay. My hips aren't, aren't that flexible. Some of you guys might be uber flexible and can sit both where your sits bones are down there. Um, I, I cannot. Yeah, some people are gymnasts in a former yeah. life. <laughs> Not so much, right? Um, okay, Karen has a question. Um, I have a clicking sound in my hip when doing the single leg circles. Is that an issue? Um, no, I've got a feeling that you're probably just tight when mm -hmm. I hear that clicking sound. And if you can always make that circle smaller. So when you're doing those, you know, if you're doing this, just make it a nice small circle. Um, I'm going to guess you know, you're clicking because you're tight somewhere. And that's another thing that maybe you want to think about reaching long out of that hip and not necessarily just doing the circle, but really elongate and you go ahead and I'll, I'll show you on this leg. I, you can even press your, like uh, palm of your hand in there and just think about long. It might be easier if you bend the other leg. See if that stops that clicking and gives you more stability in the hip. This is all about stability and coming out of that hip. Nice. Cool. Um, yeah, so as Phoebe says, uh, my left leg and that mermaid one practically on the ceiling. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> want to do that for sure. Um, so yeah, so just great to sit in that whenever you can. I mean, not to the point of, of hurting yourself or, or angering it more, but it's a good, especially like you said, after a run, it feels really nice, so. And sometimes too, when I, you know, this is my tight hip, Sometimes I even have to come out like this to come out of it. And then when I'm, uh, you know, when I'm training somebody in my studio, in my store, if I'm doing that with them and I get up and walk, sometimes you'll hear this pop, which is, means my hip just shot right back into place and loosened up. And then it's like, sure. So don't worry about being tight. That's, that's the number one reason I say do this exercise, you know, sit like that. It's amazing. I used to have lower back pain, really, really, really bad. When I figured out it was my hips and I got them to loosen up, I do not have lower back pain. Anytime I do, I know it's my hips and I start to stretch them out and it goes away. It's crazy. I mean, I know there's other things on back pain, but a lot of reasons sure. our back pain is our hips. Well, and that's what we're working on too with uh, Brenda does a lot of, um, she does yoga and many happy miles on Friday. And we also have a video on our YouTube site with Brenda unlocking your hips. I mean, they're just the key to so much. They're yeah. like, the, they're the gateway to many, many things. Pain. <laughs> Week. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I encourage you guys to, when you stand up and walk around, I know after I do a Pilates class, I feel two inches taller, which, you know, let's say, let's be honest, I don't really need, but I love how tall and how um, much space my spine feels like it has. So kind of pay attention to that today. I mean, unfortunately, like all exercise, it's not a savings account. You got to keep putting deposits in every day. So you know, so usually by the end of the day, especially if you're sitting, it's going to kind of, you're going to come back to your normal hunch. But, you know, like, like I said, this video will be available and, um, you know, so whenever you can get to it and hopefully we'll do a new, uh, another class soon, Lisa, we'll definitely keep you guys posted. Sounds All good. Right. Have Thanks. a great day, you guys. Enjoy your weekends. Thanks a lot, Lisa. Bye. Bye.